Okay, we're going to start. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dimitri Mevzos. I'm from World Danish Organization with uh, my colleagues here from uh, ZF UK. Uh, uh, I would like to introduce uh, our guests now, uh, Estelle Suisa and Udi Shkedi from Ben Gurion Heritage Center in Israel. And um, in this lecture, we will continue our series of lecture about inspirational Zionists. Okay, we will have a couple of more. I will tell about this a bit later. And today, uh, Esther and Udi will take us to amazing journey in Haifa uh, by Herzl. Uh, Esti, hi. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, lovely to see some of you again. Um, we were together in July at the desert, uh, at the desert home in Stable Care. And here we are now. I'm currently at home, um, soon to be out of the lockdown. And Udi, who you are about to meet, uh, a young, vibrant uh, guy who works with us in our northern, in our northern branch. And he's in Haifa, waiting to show us around not just Haifa in a regular tour, but to see the connection to Theodor Herzl. Um, so we're very excited. Um, if there are any questions, please send them by chat, uh, and I'll uh, make a, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll ask um, Udi, um, and I'll just be very uh, presumptuous and say that Udi uh, is about to become a first-time father in the next few days. <laughs> So that we hope it doesn't happen in the next hour and that he'll be with us. Um, and we'd like to thank the, uh, the government to, for stopping the lockdown today, allowing us Just to for do us. Um, <laughs> but there, but Ildi still has to be with a mask on um, and he'll tell you why. So again, if there are any questions, we're looking forward to this uh, lovely afternoon here in Haifa. And so everybody in the UK, we send our blessings to safety. Um, and again, if there are any questions and through chat, enjoy. Over to Udi. Okay. Hi guys, how are you? Uh, as Estelle said, my name is Udi. Uh, I'm uh, 32 years old. I live in, uh, in Haifa in the past uh, seven years. Um, I'm, uh, I work in the uh, northern branch of the uh, Ben Gurion Insti Heritage Institute. Uh, before I'll tell you a bit more about myself, I first need to apologize. Uh, as you can understand, English is not my uh, native language. Uh, so I, normally I joke about myself then I, and I said, uh, uh, my English level is a bit higher than the Dead Sea level. So uh, this is the highest as I can get. Hopefully it's, it will be understandable enough, uh, but hopefully next time, perhaps when we'll meet, <laughs> then my English level will be higher <laughs> instead of the uh, uh, declining level of the, of the Dead Sea. So uh, we'll start a, 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 bit about, a, a, a bit about an introduction about Haifa. Uh, Haifa is the third biggest uh, city in Israel. Uh, its population is about uh, 300,000 people. Um, most of them are, uh, are Jewish. Uh, there is about 15% uh, Arabs who live in Haifa. So it's a, it's a mixed city. Um, and we're, today uh, we're going to do a kind of a tour uh, from Haifa, the old city of Haifa, uh, which we'll see uh, in the scene through scenery we're not going to walk there and then we go through the new city of Haifa uh, which is represented in uh, uh, in Hadar neighborhood one of the uh, modern uh, neighborhoods of Haifa uh, a bit more more about myself before we we begin our uh, our scenic view here uh, I'm as I said I'm 32 years old uh, I live here in Haifa because I fell in love with the city. Uh, when I did a, a year off before my military service, uh, I did some social work here in Haifa, here in Adar neighborhood. And after uh, uh, a couple of years, uh, my wife and I decided that we want to 
come back here to Haifa because of its, um, I don't know, it's a beautiful city. Um, I didn't see, someone uh, asked something through chat, so uh, um, Esther will... Uh, uh, just asked uh, if, any, if anyone would like to write down if they've been to Haifa ah. before. <laughs> yeah, if you've been to Haifa before, that's, uh, you can write in, chat, in the chat. Um, so before, I, I, I hope that uh, uh, instead of uh, saying am and uh, oh, how do you say this in, in, uh, in English, I hope that uh, it will be uh, uh, fluent. So let's start and see, and see what we see. Uh, I'm here in the Memorial Garden in Haifa. Um, I'm walking to the um, scenery here, the scenic view here. Uh, and I want to show you uh, what I see from here. Uh, we have a, a very good day today uh, because uh, the, as you see, the, the, the sun is behind me. And I'll flip the camera and I'll show you a bit what I see now. We're looking now, Haifa is the only city in Israel that you can look north and see the sea. The sea in Israel uh, is on the, west, uh, on the west side. So Haifa is the only city when you look north, you can also see the sea because it's located on the edge of the, of the mountain, uh, Mount Carmel, and in the edge of the bay. Uh, the bay itself is called uh, the Akko Bay or Akra Bay uh, because the biggest city and the most important city in the history of this region, uh, uh, the northern part of, uh, of Israel, the biggest city was for a long time Akko. Uh, just a minute. Oh, and uh, now I'll do a bit zoom in. I can do. Okay, you see there, uh, I'm looking north towards Akko. Akko, for most of the uh, most of history here in the region, Akko was the biggest, the big city, the important city. All the commercial, all uh, all the history of the area was located in there in the in the north northern part of the bay, uh, and you see the bay here. The, the building is a bit uh, distracting, but you see the bay here and the, also the port. We'll talk a bit, a bit about them in a second. You can also see, I'm looking now uh, north, you see this big building. Between this big building and that big building was the old city of Haifa, one of the old cities. I'll talk a bit about, uh, about that in a minute. And you can also see the old port. This is the old port there. So um, as I said, Haifa is the third biggest city in Israel. Uh, it's located on the edge of the mountain. Which mountain? This mountain. It's very difficult to see because of the, uh, of the sun, but you can see the uh, Mount Carmel. It's like a, a, a big tongue of land that goes through, the, through uh, into the sea. It's very high. Uh, in, uh, in comparison with the rest of the, of the part here. Uh, so it was very important strateg strategically, and it was uh, very, um, it's, a, it's a very iconic uh, picture of Haifa, the bay and the mountain behind me. Uh, because of the sun, I, I won't uh, flip the camera back because you, you won't be able to see anything. <laughs> uh, why is it called Haifa? It's a very interesting uh, thing because Haifa, uh, um, in contrast with a lot of cities in Israel, has no uh, establishment date uh, because throughout most of history, uh, people lived here in the, near the bay, near the sea, uh, mostly uh, living off the sea. Uh, but Haifa was, uh, uh, wasn't a, a very big city throughout most of, history, of known history. It was also always a, a, a place where human settlements uh, were established and rebuilt. And, uh, 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 but as a city, its history is very, uh, very modern. Uh, throughout most of the uh, history, the people here in Haifa uh, uh, didn't live 
in the big city as you see now, but, but mostly lived in the edge. There, as I showed you earlier, the old port. Okay, this was the, uh, the, part, the place where Haifa El Atika, Haifa El Atika in Arabic is the old Haifa was, uh, was established there. Uh, most of the people there, most of the people here in Haifa Latika uh, lived in, uh, uh, lived from the sea, uh, uh, were fishermen or for, a, uh, uh, for, a, for part were also uh, pirates. Uh, <laughs> it was a pirate city. Uh, but Haifa uh, uh, is, is a very important uh, place because it's one of the oldest ports in Israel. Why do I say, for the one hand, it's a very old port city. On the other hand, uh, there, the, it wasn't a very important place. Uh, what is the name Haifa? I started uh, to ask, why, what is the name Haifa? Well, Haifa, uh, you can see me? I saw someone. No. Uh, oh. Yeah, we can see you. Yeah, OK. Esther, uh, still, I you can't, can't see anything. You can't, the, you your share screen is not working still. Screen sharing. Yeah. OK, I'm going to try uh, that. Well, take uh, it out, please. Okay. Thank you. Can I Let's try go back again? to me for can now. I, can I just try again? No. <laughs> uh, OK. Now, uh, for most part, for um, as I said, Haifa in Arabic is the word for a rock. So Haifa is a rock, Kaifa in Arabic, because of the mountain. It's a very important place because uh, uh, during, uh, uh, during the Ottoman Empire uh, um, regime here in the land of Israel, uh, Akko uh, was destroyed in, uh, um, during the um, 19th century, no, the 18th century. Uh, so Haifa became a big city and a, and a very important place. Why do I say that? I said uh, uh, Akko was the biggest city, the most important one. Uh, in the mid, uh, mid 19th, uh, 19th century, uh, Egyptian rulers conquested uh, all the parts of the um, uh, Ottoman Empire that uh, were here in, uh, in Israel. And they uh, incinerated Akko. So Haifa was the second port here. Uh, so it became a, bit, um, a more uh, important, uh, more, uh, more important port, more important harbor. Uh, it's increased uh, uh, its value in this, its status here in Israel. Uh, during, sorry, I need one second. <laughs> I'm very nervous and I'm very excited. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, this is why I'm, I'm a bit, uh, um, <laughs> I'm trying to uh, uh, rearrange my thoughts. <laughs> uh, so I talked a bit about Haifa about Akko and about the history. Where was the, the old city of Haifa? I said earlier, you saw there, I, I, I talked about Haifa El Atika. Uh, it, ch it changed my uh, perspective. For example. Uh, oh, now you can see the, the, the uh, presentation that Esther uh, uh, shared with you. I want to show you how Haifa looked in the 19th century. This is the city of Haifa, a painting of the city of Haifa in the uh, upper left uh, corner of the presentation. Uh, in the upper right, you can see Mount Carmel, the same mountain I, I showed you uh, a second ago. This is the edge of it that touch, touches the water. Uh, and we can also see here a map uh, that was illustrated in uh, 1880. As you can see, the, the city of Haifa that you see now in my picture, in, uh, in my scenic view, you can see it's a big city now. But Haifa in the 1880s was very small. Uh, you can see on the PEF map, PEF, uh, the Palestine Exploration Fund, uh, you can see uh, Haifa Latika. It's written in, uh, uh, in English. Okay. You can see also the German colony. 
uh, the first uh, uh, red section in the, in the map. And you can see also Haifa, another Haifa. How is it that there are two Haifas? So in 1761, the ruler of the, of the Galilee, Daira Loma was, uh, was, was his name. He decides that the pirates in Haifa and the old city of Haifa is too old. So he decides to, to erect them and to rebuild the city of Haifa as a modern city. He decides to build Haifa, the, the, the new Haifa, in the narrowest spot between the mountain and the bay, okay? So what you see now down in my picture, in what I'm filming now, you can see a big building, uh, a, build, a big, uh, um, a big building in the gray, uh, you can hear. אני לא מצליח, או, זהו, לא, לא מצליח לי, אסתר, תפסיקי את השיתוף מסך. אוקיי. או, now, you can see a big building here with, in gray colors, the Haifel Jadida, Daire Lomar's city, new modern city was built in this area. It was a modern city. So what do you need in a modern city? You need walls, you need gates, you need a, a fortresses to, to create security. So he builds a new city in the narrowest part between the bay and the mountain. Its northern gate is called Jaffo, Jaffo Gate because it leads to the road to, to Jaffo. The, northern, the southern gate, which was somewhere where you see the, the big building, the big building that looks like a rocket, in Haifa, we say it, it looked like its, its name is the rocket, the rocket building. Uh, the, the second gate of the city was where you can see the, uh, the, this building. It was the southern uh, gate, but it was called Akko Gate because the, the road there led to Akko, from there to Akko. And he built a city that is a, a mile and a, I think mile and a half in its uh, length and approximately a quarter of a mile in its wide. So it's a very small city in modern uh, um, terms, uh, but in those terms, it was a big city. And in this city, uh, he builds a wall. Do you see anything from that city? Dar el Omar was the ruler of the, Gal of the uh, northern of Galilee. Uh, he was a ruler that was appointed by the Ottoman Empire. Uh, he builds the city and nowadays we don't have any uh, um, rem remnants of that city. Uh, we know about it from, mostly from maps. In Haifa, there, are no, uh, there aren't a lot of um, remnants from, uh, from the old days, from the old Haifa. Uh, but uh, this is what we know about it today. Uh, it was a big city from, for that, that time because Dagalomo takes all the villages in the area and there were a lot of villages and villagers and puts them in, in the city. Uh, so, and he calls this city the new Haifa because we had the old Haifa, Haifa El Atika, and now we have the, the new Haifa, Haifa El Jadida, okay? In the city, there is also a Jewish uh, uh, community, not a big one, uh, but this community becomes more and bigger and bigger and bigger throughout the 19th century and the 20th century. So this is what uh, uh, we see today from Haifa. What else can we see here? We can see one of the, the iconic characteristics of Haifa, the port. You see how big it is? Uh, it's one of the, the second biggest ports uh, uh, in Israel. Uh, and it, it serves all the northern part of the state. I'll go from here 
to another place so you can see me. And now let's talk about why yeah. Herzl. Why, why Herzl? Haifa and why, why Herzl? Why, why, why this, is a, this is the big question. Uh, so I wanted to show you uh, what Herzl writes about a port. Uh, what is the rocket building? The rocket building is the big building out, uh, behind me. You can see it. In Haifa, uh, we're calling it, today is the uh, complex of the um, government complex. All the government uh, uh, authorities uh, that, uh, wow, I'm sorry. One second. All the government authorities and the uh, wow. are sitting there. Uh, Esther, I want you to uh, show them the, uh, the port. Uh, the, the quote of Herzl. And we'll hear the quote of Herzl when he uh, talks about- I to sum up the Basel Congress in a word, which I shall guard against pronouncing publicly. It would be this, at Basel, I founded the Jewish state. If I said this out loud today, I would be answered by universal laughter. Perhaps in five years, certainly in 50, everyone will know it. Okay, uh, back to me. So what is the connection between Haifa and Herzl? I'm trying to stand in a place where you can see me and the view behind me. It's very difficult because of the sun. What is it doing? Okay, here it's a, it's a bit better here. Um, okay. Where are I to sum up the Basel Congress in a so, word? Uh, in order to, to understand the connection between Haifa and Herzl, you need to know a bit about Herzl. So I'll, uh, in a couple of sentences, sentences uh, who was Herzl? Herzl was, uh, uh, is now is considered the visionary or the dreamer of the Jewish state. Uh, he was born in uh, 1860. Uh, I think most of us know uh, one, uh, one or, mo or more uh, things about Herzl. Uh, but the more important part, thing uh, I wanted to talk about here, the things that are uh, uh, connected to, uh, to Haifa, okay? Why is Herzl connected to Haifa? Herzl uh, was a journalist. He was a lawyer. Uh, at the age of 18, he started, uh, started uh, learning, uh, studying in, uh, in the University of Vienna, in Vienna. Uh, at the age, age of 24, he finished his, uh, his studies with a uh, doctorate degree in law, okay? After a year working as a lawyer, he decides that he wants to, uh, to work as a journalist because he thinks he, or he thinks he knows his, uh, uh, come. I'm going, to, I'm going to butt in to, uh, for Yeah, for thank you. Because as uh, I'm sure everybody knows, uh, the, the, the basics about Herzl, what, what a lot of people don't know is that um, after the first Zionist Congress, and I understand from Dima that in two days, it's the 38th Zionist Congress, so it's very apt today. Um, Herzl actually visits Israel. He actually visits the land of Israel. And what you can see in the share screen are actually photographs from his visits to, uh, to the land of Israel. Um, in Mikva Israel, he actually meets the Kaiser, he meets um, the, German, the German emperor. Um, but the, the, what's interesting here is he actually doesn't set foot in Haifa. He greets the Jaffa port, but he doesn't actually set foot in Haifa. But on the other hand, he writes a very important book, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. And in that book, he writes about the ideal city, what he sees as the ideal city. Back to you, yeah. Udi. Thank you. Herzl uh, visits Israel uh, in 1898. He, come out, he comes off the ship in Jaffa. He's 
with, uh, uh, it's, it's hot. In the middle of October in Israel, it's hot. Now, today also. He uh, uh, sprains his ankle when he goes down from the ship. He has a fever. He dressed in a, a German a traditional suit. So his encounter with Israel is a very, uh, uh, it's, it's not very uh, um, inviting, okay? But uh, Herzl uh, uh, visits Jaffo, and then from there he goes to Rishon LeZion, uh, he visits Mikve Israel and also in, in Jerusalem, but he doesn't set foot in Haifa. Without, with saying that, Herzl writes, in 19, he starts writing in 1889, after the, his visit in Israel, he starts writing a book that will become his vision, his vision, visionary book, uh, Alt Neuland, the, the book is called. Alt Neuland in, in Hebrew, Tel Aviv, in, uh, uh, in English, an old new land, okay? He writes about the connection of an old people with his old, with their old, country, but with a modern twist. And Herzl writes this, uh, uh, this novel and publishes it in 1902. And it becomes uh, uh, a very, uh, uh, a, a part of every, every, uh, uh, every Jewish uh, people uh, idea to what a new country, sh what the new old country should look like. Uh, the first encounter, the, the book is a, is a, is a, is a novel that uh, uh, depicts the, uh, the story of two, two people, uh, kind of like Herzl character, uh, that comes to a visit to Israel, to the, to the land, the, the Holy Land, uh, after they decide to leave Europe and go to the uh, India, Indian Ocean. Uh, uh, to live in an, on an island. And Herzl gives, uh, uh, on the way, her, uh, they visit Israel. And Herzl gives in their mouth, in their, uh, 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 speaks through them and shows the, what these guys, uh, or what Herzl himself uh, uh, experienced in his visit to Israel. The, 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 a very unmodern place a very uh, uh, hard people, uh, hard experience here. This is the experience of those two guys at first. But after 20 years in the island of, in the uh, Indian Ocean, they decide to go back to Europe. And again, they go through the Indian, the, uh, the land of Israel. But then Herzl gives them or says through them a new depiction of the, this, uh, this country. And the first, he first starts his new depiction in Haifa as the futuristic city. He shows, or he, I, I want you to show to uh, let them hear the quote of Herzl, Estelle. Uh, what is the new or the, this, this new experience with uh, uh, of these two characters, of Herzl characters with the new city, the new futuristic city? of Haifa. Udi, um, uh, whilst you're walking to the town hall, um, yeah. there are two questions. What about, is there a, the Navy base there? And the second question is, how did Herzl consider the need to cooperate with the Turkish authorities and with the local, those who are the indigenous peoples, those who are already so, living there? First of all, the, the submarine uh, port is over there, as I, saw, as I told you, it's the old port. We, saw, we see now the old port. This is the old port there, okay? So one of them is the harbor of the submarines. Uh, there are a lot of ports or, or harbors there uh, for the military ships and for the submarines. Uh, this is the, the modern port, okay? Which was built in, uh, in 1933. Uh, under uh, the British mandate. Uh, the British were the ones who decided to place Haifa as their main port in the Mediterranean. So they built here a new uh, civil port and a military port, okay? So what we see now uh, in, our, uh, 
uh, in the video is the British port. Behind it, you can see the new port. The, it's a Chinese port, okay? Uh, Herzl, uh, okay. Herzl uh, uh, still asked me about the cooperation through tr uh, Turkish uh, uh, authorities. Herzl tried to create uh, or to, his idea was to get a charter to move the Jewish people from Europe or from around the world uh, to, uh, to the land to a different location outside of Europe. Uh, he, he decided to, uh, sorry. Mm. No, we didn't hear that, hold on. Yeah, yeah, uh, someone uh, yelled at me. <laughs> Uh, we want you to hear make sure me? That, Ari, that Udi doesn't get a, uh, a ticket from the local policeman for not wearing a mask. Uh, I suggest moving to town hall. Yeah, I'm moving towards town hall. And yeah. in the meantime, I'm going to share a screen and show uh, the next the next slide. Uh, you can hear me. There, you can hear me. We can hear you. We can hear yeah, okay. you. Okay. So Herzog wanted to uh, get a charter to move the Jewish people from Europe. Uh, he first uh, tried to contact British authorities. He also tries to contact uh, uh, with to 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 get this charter to move the the Jewish people. Uh, he contacts the empire, the German Empire authorities, and also the Turkish uh, government uh, at that time. Uh, but his idea for a charter doesn't really uh, didn't uh, work because uh, after seven years of political uh, uh, in, in politics, <laughs> you can say, Herzl dies in 1904 without getting this uh, charter. But this was his idea to move the Jewish people to somewhere else. In his first book, the, the very important also, the, uh, the Judenstaat or the Jewish state, he, he has a, a chapter that says Palestine or Argent Argentina, it doesn't matter. You need to move the Jews from Europe because that's, this is the question, this is the answer to the Jewish question. This is Herzl, Herzl's uh, ideas uh, uh, because Jews in Europe doesn't really, uh, uh, didn't actually uh, become more and more intertwined to the uh, to their surrounding, and anti-Semitism uh, became a very uh, a very hard, very uh, um, how do you say it? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, anti-Semitism uh, uh, rose its head uh, uh, very difficult, very very hard uh, when Herzl was in Paris. So. In, 19, uh, in 1896, he writes the Judenstadt, the, the, the Jewish state. And after his visit to Israel, uh, he starts writing Alt Neuland. In his, in his book, is in, in Alt Neuland, Herzl describes his vision not only for a Jewish state, but mostly to a Jewish society, to a new society here in Israel. Uh, 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 Andy, having seen the port, let's read what he says yeah. about... About As I said, the, the, the uh, Herzl's uh, description of the new city begins with this, the new society begins with this quote. A city on the blue sea turned out to be beautiful. This was the most convenient and safest port in the Mediterranean. Ships of all sizes, of all types, with flags from all the nations will anchor there peacefully. So for Herzl's a, a, a vision, a, the first a city encounter on the blue sea oh. <laughs> turned out to be beautiful. The first encounter of his character in his book with the new society that can be a, 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 can be here a, is an encounter with the port because the port is a gate to the world. From there, people go inside, and from there, commercials go out. Com commercial go outside. Uh, so this is this is a very important uh, uh, idea 
in Herzl, a kind of a creating a new uh, society, a cosmopolitic society. And the city of Haifa becomes his, uh, um, his ideal, society. ideal for this new society, a new a city, a futuristic city. But as you can see, when Herzl writes about Haifa, this is what Herzl sees. He doesn't see because he's not visiting, he, he didn't visit here in Haifa, but he hears about it. He hears, he hears, hears about Mount Carmel, about the, the bay, okay? But it, did, it didn't actually uh, uh, take foot here in Haifa. Uh, Haifa in uh, the 1900s, uh, in the beginning of the 1900s, uh, is a small city, a bigger city than Haifa Latika was, but it's still a very small one. Two main things uh, uh, changed its course. One of them is the port, as I said. Uh, the first port, the first modern port was established by the Ottomans, but afterwards in the mid, uh, and, uh, in the mid twenties and the beginning of the thirties, 1930s, uh, the British uh, uh, took over and started on, and developed a new and modern and very big port, as I said. Uh, but uh, the second thing uh, is the railways, uh, the train. Okay, the Ottoman Empire uh, decided to create Haifa as a, as a main port before the British, and they decided to, uh, uh, to put the main uh, train station in the Mediterranean, uh, the main train station of the Hijazic train, the big train that uh, connected between two parts of the, of the uh, um, Ottoman Empire, uh, the, the biggest station on the sea train station was in Haifa. So Haifa became a bigger city and it also a, 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 a attracted a certain kind of population. Port workers, train workers, okay, it became a blue collared city. Uh, one of Haifa's uh, most iconic uh, uh, people uh, is its first mayor, its first modern mayor. Uh, his name was Hassan Bey Shukri. Hassan Bey Shukri was Arab. Haifa, as I said, you need to understand Haifa, until the mid 40s and into, uh, uh, into the, the, uh, um, the War of Independence in the 1948, until then, Haifa was a mixed city, 50% Arabs, 50% Jewish, okay? Uh, the Jewish population in Haifa became bigger and bigger uh, throughout the 30s. Uh, and Hassan Bey Shukri was elected in 1927, he was elected in, uh, after, he was appointed to be a mayor uh, in, uh, in, 1940, in 1920. Uh, and afterwards he was elected again in 1927. And he was the mayor for Haifa throughout the, uh, the end of the 1920s and until 1940 when he died during office. Hassan Shukri, is a representative of the idea of creating a society, a mixed society, but that, um, that sees the other one as equal to you. Why do I say that? This is what Herzl writes uh, in his book about the connection or the uh, relationship between Arabs and Jews here in Haifa and in Israel. Estelle? Let me tell you that my friend and I do not discriminate between humans. We do not ask what race or what religion he is from. He has to be a human being. That is all that's important for us. In 1927, when Hassan Shukri was elected, uh, Haifa is an Arab city. More than 70% of its population are Arabs. So you would think that if a mayor is elected, in an Arab society, or as we say, to, or today is in a Jew, when a Jewish mayor in a Jewish city is elected, you think that most of his care will go to, the, uh, uh, to his population, to the Arabs. So if he's a Arab mayor, most of his care will go to the Arabs. Hassan Bey Shukri uh, decides not to do the same uh, uh, routine, as you say. Uh, he starts by 
uh, uh, appointing a representative to the Jewish community in the town hall. Why? Hassan Shukri, in that time, uh, the, the Jewish population are uh, very, very little in Haifa, about uh, uh, 10, between 10 and 12 percent. Why do you need a representative in a small city? I don't know. But Hassan Shukri, until then, until Hassan Shukri, there wasn't any representation for the Jewish community in Haifa. Although he's Arab, he decides that every memo in uh, uh, that the, the town hall issues will be in three languages, in Hebrew for the Jewish, in Arabic for the Arabs, and in English, okay? In order to create a, 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 an equality or a scene equality between a, a Arabs and Jews in Haifa. Hassan Shukri wants, to, wants the, the Jewish population to be a more active part of, its commun of, the, of the community. So he also appoints a deputy mayor, a Jewish deputy mayor uh, in 1927. So Hassan Shukri decides to, uh, uh, to take the ideas, he, he didn't read Herzl, but his ideas are very connected to what Herzl writes about. Herzl writes about a kind of society that everyone can feel uh, uh, close to, can, everyone can feel a part of, if you're Arab, if you're Jewish, uh, if you're, uh, uh, if you're, sorry, uh, um, Orthodox, if you're a, a secular, if you're a man or if you're a woman, it doesn't matter. Everyone should be, should feel and be a part of this society. This is what Herzl thinks. And Hassan Shukri takes these ideas, not from Herzl, but from his friends, and from his uh, uh, experience and tries to create them as a reality. Uh, so this is why he decides that the government, uh, uh, sorry, uh, that the government's offices uh, or the, the town hall offices should be between the Jewish neighborhood and the Arab neighborhood. So everyone will feel secure to come and uh, 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 get his get serviced uh, uh, or get his service uh, without feeling uh, uh, a sense of in insecurity uh, by going through the Jewish or if an Arab goes through the Jewish uh, neighborhoods or if a Jew Jew Jewish go through uh, an Arab neighborhood. So in Haifa, there is a, a kind of a, although it's a mixed city, and until the 1940s, it was a, a very, a, sorry. It's a mixed city. Until the 1940s, a, there was a lot of connection between the Jewish community and the Arab community. A, Arabs and Jews worked together in the ports. Arabs and Jews worked together in, plan, a, in plants. A, until the 40s, it was a very uh, uh, intertwined coexistence. Uh, in, 1920, in 1948, something broke this uh, coexistence. And I'm in the Memorial Garden, and I want to show you uh, this uh, memorial. Uh, this memor Memorial Garden is the, uh, one of the first that were built in, the, uh, in Israel after the independence war in 1948. Uh, you can see here the um, Haifa in stone. This is the city of Haifa, okay? You can also see here uh, a soldier and something that looks like a dying soldier in one, on one hand and on the other hand like a dove. So it's a depiction of the coexistent of the, the society that lived here together until 1948, but something broke it. You can see it's broken. It's not one, uh, uh, um, one stone, but it's a stone that has cracks in it. So until 1948, Haifa was a mixed city, 50% Arabs, 50% Jewish, but something broke it. This is the idea of this garden. It's a memorial garden, but you can't see here the names 
of the people who died here on the, uh, in the um, uh, battle for Haifa in 1948, because uh, uh, it's supposed to be something of uh, all the societies, the Jewish society and the Arab society. Uh, I'm going now through uh, Hassan Shukri Street. Hassan Shukri, as I said, uh, was a very, uh, was a very important part of creating this um, coexistence between Jews and Arabs in Haifa. Uh, so after he died, the city, uh, the city of Haifa decided to name this street where the municipality resides, the town hall resides, and also uh, what was the uh, courts. As I said, the idea of Hassan Shukri, that uh, the uh, town hall and the courts should be in between the, uh, the Jewish neighborhood and the Arab neighborhood. So everyone will feel secure to come and demand their service or to get their service uh, and to get represented uh, uh, equally in, in, in regard to their uh, percentage in the community, okay? I'm going now through uh, Alexander Berwald Street into uh, Hadar neighborhood. As I said, uh, there aren't a lot of uh, remnants from Haifa, the old city of Haifa. Uh, one of the most, the, the uh, more um, preserved part of Haifa is this neighborhood, the old neighborhood of Adar, Adar uh, neighborhood, Adar Carmel, which is the uh, magnificent of Mount Carmel. This is the name in, in English. Uh, this is the, the, the uh, we're, en we're entering now to the Jewish part of Haifa, okay? The Jewish part in the old days. Today, uh, this is the, one of the only neighborhoods today that, are, uh, that Arabs and Jews live together. Uh, as I told you, Herzl uh, wrote a, a lot about in his uh, book, Alt Neuland, he wrote, uh, mainly about creating a new ideal society. Uh, this society of Herzl uh, is an equal society, a society that everyone can be a part of. It's uh, a society that um, in its core, uh, are, are in its base, the ideas of equal equality, society, and uh, um, and freedom in a kind of in a kind of way. Would you say uh, asked about the German colony? How far are we from the German colony? Ah, we're pretty far from the German colony. Uh, the German colony is uh, is one uh, is one of the oldest uh, parts of Haifa, and the one of the most uh, uh, iconic ones. But we're going through a, a Hadar neighborhood. It's uh, about uh, two kilometers from here, the German colony. Uh, in order to, for everyone to, uh, uh, to know what we're talking about, the German colony is one of the colonies that the German Templars, uh, uh, um, a kind of, um, um, how do you say, um, uh, German... Uh, um, Templars live. Uh, can you just tell us one sentence about the, ele uh, the connection to electricity? Yeah, I'm trying, to, I, I'm... Uh, Herzl writes a lot about not only uh, the moral ideas of the, of the society, but also he writes about a new technological society. One of his uh, uh, ideas, which sounds pretty obvious today, that electricity will be for all the people, okay? So Herzl writes about electricity. To my mind, so there you can uh, start the quote. <laughs> I think they can read it, it's fine. We okay. Can, uh, uh, Hertz writes about an idea at, at his time, it's, it's, not, it's not very obvious that electricity should be to everybody in equal, in, in, it's like a, a, a commodity today, but in Herzl's time, it wasn't a, a commodity. It was something that was preserved to the one who has knowledge, to ha who has wealth. So Hertz writes about the idea that electricity should be for everybody, but not only for everybody, that you should also be able to 
solve problems through uh, uh, or in the light of electricity. And it's kind of a, a connection between uh, uh, the, um, sorry, uh, a connection between the Jews, the Jews and the modern world, the society, the, the world society. This is what Herzl writes about, uh, about electricity. Herzl writes uh, a lot about technology in the service of the society. Uh, we're now in Herzl Street. I can't hear you, Estelle. Pinchas Rotenberg, he was the one who really established electricity in Israel. Yeah. Pinchas Rotenberg, uh, 15 years after Herzl dies in 1904, Pinchas Rotenberg does Aliyah, go and uh, comes to Israel. The idea of creating a network of electricity in Israel. Uh, this dream, idea, vision that nobody wants to, uh, uh, to support uh, at first. Pinchas Rotenberg uh, uh, moves mountains, you can say. <laughs> And after a lot of convincing, uh, gets uh, uh, a charter to build the first uh, electric station in Israel. The first one was between uh, Jaffa and Jerusalem. The second one, because it's important to the north, to the land of Israel, the second one was in Haifa. And again, uh, uh, it doesn't, uh, 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 he decides to build it here in Haifa because uh, uh, because of Herzl's idea, Pinchas Rotenberg reads Altneuland and decides to come to Israel and create in Haifa this new, uh, uh, this, these new ideas, this connection between technology and society. Uh, we saw earlier a bit about the, the chimneys. Uh, we saw in the scenic view, uh, uh, the edge of the chimneys of the new uh, power plant. But uh, today we can't see this uh, uh, wonderful picture here in the presentation because this building does, does not exist anymore. Uh, I'm going now through Herzl Street. Okay, you can see. Once you're working there, this is a question. Why can't hear you, is Estelle. Haifa in the Guinness Book of Records? Anybody know? Why is Haifa in the Guinness Book of Records? Does anybody have any ideas that can answer in the chat? In the chat? We're about to show you. So as Esther, uh, as Esther asked, Haifa holds the record. Uh, Haifa holds a record, a Guinness record, uh, for nearly uh, 70 years, more than 70 years. Uh, more than 70 years that Haifa holds a Guinness record. My mind. Uh, Is anyone and yeah, no, you, you can go through the, uh, past the, this video. Uh, this record uh, is uh, a record that Herzl gives its idea. Uh, so go to the quote of Herzl. The, uh, the Carmelite, which Odi is talking about. The shortest, the, actually the shortest um, underground uh, funicular railway uh, in the world. And this is what he says, electric overhead train um, based in Europe. And it's still, it's still in Europe, to, it's still in Haifa today. I'm sure many of you have seen it. Uh, so Haifa has the shortest funicular All the in uh, the world. The king's Sorry, yeah. And now before I'll sh we'll show you another um, another video, short video. I want to show you here, this is Herzl Street, okay? Uh, until today, this is the uh, main street in Haifa, although uh, there isn't any main street in Haifa. <laughs> Haifa is a city that is built uh, in several centers. It has several centers, uh, but uh, uh, these centers were connected during the uh, British mandate and Haifa became a, um, a cohesive uh, city. 
Uh, and Herzl was, Herzl Street was decided that it will be the main street. Until today, this is one of the busiest streets in Haifa. Today, as you can see, we're, uh, we're still in a kind of a lockdown here. So there aren't a lot of uh, people on the streets. Uh, but, and the stores are also, uh, most of them are closed. But I want to show you a couple of things. You see the buildings uh, are very, very uh, interesting in, this, in their architecture. Uh, in a couple of minutes, we'll show you another uh, a video uh, that will depict this street again. Uh, the video that Estelle will show you in a minute uh, is a video uh, or is a part of a video uh, of a, a film that is called The Promised, La the Promised Land. Uh, in Hebrew, it's Lechaim uh, Chadashim. It's a, a film that was created uh, by, the, uh, by Keren Ayesod uh, in order to encourage Aliyah to, uh, to the land of Israel in the 30s. Uh, the part that you, you will see now uh, is a part is filmed here in Haifa on this street. And you will see these, uh, these balconies, okay, uh, in Herzl Street. It uh, depicts the, the Haifa in uh, uh, Shavuot during the holiday, okay? And you'll see, uh, look at the people, how they, how they look. Uh, we're near Jerusalem Street. I, I'll go to, through, uh, uh, through it, or I'll show you Jerusalem Street. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll show you now, you'll see this uh, balcony there. Uh, Udi, I'm going to show us a show. Yeah, OK. You'll see the balcony. You see the balcony that I'm looking at now. Uh, you'll see the balcony uh, in the in the video also a video from the 30s when the grain and the fruit harvests are in the jewish festival is celebrated as it was in the ancient days of the temple in Haifa, at the head of the Valley of Jezreel, the Palestinian Thanksgiving is observed amid colorful scenes. The wanderers of 2,000 years have come home. In their homeland, they express their gratitude for the new life which is theirs and for the promise which it holds out to millions of exiles scattered throughout the world. The fulfillment of an ancient dream. I'm going now to our uh, final uh, stop. So we're going to our uh, final stop. If there are any questions, then either by chat or people tell them mute. So you can see, first of all, it's a, a film from Karen Hayasod, the precursor to the UJIA. And you can see a very developed hyper already in 1934, 1935, which is actually quite interesting. 
Um, so we're going to go back to Udi to see our final stop with a quote um, which we'll come back to. Thank you, Udi. And as you notice, it's a lovely day here in uh, Haifa and I'm in the south of Israel. No autumn leaves as you have in, uh, in the UK, but um, that's what we have here. Okay, for, so for our final uh, stop, uh, I'm going now to uh, one of the things that Herzl talks about the, the most in his book. Uh, one of his most emphasized things are, is education. Herzl talks a lot or writes a lot about education in this new city as a tool of creating a, a equal chances. So in 19, uh, after Herzl dies, in 1911, uh, this building was built. This is one of the icon, most iconic uh, buildings. This building is, uh, in, in Hebrew, it's called the Technion, uh, which is the highest uh, or high, uh, uh, high in institute for technology, okay? Uh, today, the Technion is one of the uh, biggest and most important universities in, uh, in Israel. Uh, but the first building, uh, today it's not here. Today, this is a, a, a science, the Sci National Science Museum. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see this huge building in the middle of a neighborhood, uh, of a residential neighborhood. Uh, you see the, the entrance, it's look, it looks like a kind of a temple. Uh, and it's not uh, not by chance. Uh, this is a kind of the, a kind of a temple. This is the temple for the religion of uh, for the modern religion for knowledge. Okay, this is why they decided to build here this uh, this building, this university. It was the first university in Israel. Uh, Herzl writes about education, as I said. In order to create, uh, in order to create equality, uh, you need a, a kind of a, a baseline that everyone will go through this. So Herzl writes about uh, in the in this new society that education will be uh, uh, for everyone, without uh, with no regard to how how much money your parents have, and he also writes about a uniform uh, in the in the uh, education system. Uh, in 1911, this building was be uh, began, it's a, uh, they began this uh, building um, um, uh, construction, okay? Uh, it was finished in 1930, 13, sorry, uh, but it was, uh, oh. it was neglected for uh, 10 years. And only in 1924, uh, they began the studies here and it was, uh, who financed, uh, it, it was, sorry, in a bit, it was, uh, and still it was the first university in Israel to be built. Herzl uh, wanted it to, call, to be called the university, the Zion University, okay? Uh, but Herzl in 1904, as I said, uh, died. And uh, this idea of this university was built after him. Uh, in 1924, uh, for its opening, grand opening, uh, the, uh, the founders or the the directorion, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the 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 founders of the university. Yeah, the founders of the university decided to uh, approach one of the. Uh, most famous, most famous Jewish uh, researchers, uh, scientists. Uh, so he uh, and asked him to be uh, its first uh, uh, dean, uh, and they uh, uh, they approached Albert Einstein, who told them uh, that he's not interested in uh, uh, putting himself into this uh, local politics, but on its opening, 
he and his wife uh, uh, came here to the Technion and planted two palm trees, this one and the second one there. Uh, the Technion was in the middle of uh, a struggle, the language struggle, on which language should uh, the studies begin in. Uh, the idea of the found founders was that the uh, studies will be in German because that's the, that was the uh, language of science that day. But the population here in Haifa and throughout Israel uh, wanted the, that in the first university uh, in Israel that uh, uh, they will study in Hebrew. So the, uh, a war of, the, of, the, of languages, a war, war of tongues was uh, started, but as I said, in the, uh, it was the, the building itself was neglected uh, for 10 years, uh, mostly because of the First World War, okay? Uh, so after we talked about Herzl and uh, we saw a bit about Haifa, I wanted to finish with a quote by Herzl. As I said, Herzl writes a vision, a, a story, a novel that depicts a vision to an idyllic, uh, uh, ideal society, uh, an exemplary, exemplary society. He writes about uh, his ideas in 1902. Uh, the book is published uh, in that year. Uh, Herzl finishes his book with two quotes that I wanted to, you to see. Uh, and I read, dream and deed are not as different as many think. All the deeds of men are dreams at first and become dreams in the end. If you will it, it is no legend, but if you, uh, you will not, it may very well be only a legend dreamt up by myself and will always be so. So this is uh, our, uh, our um, tour of Haifa through Herzl's vision to an exemplary society, to a just society. But he says something in the end of the book that is very important. It's dreams, it's what that drives us. It's something that we, we need in order to create a new thing. But this uh, new thing creates new dreams. And Ersel says in the end, if you will it, in Pirzu, in Hebrew, Enzo Agada. This is the most iconic phrase Herzl says. Im tirzu enzo agada, if you want it, if you will it, it's no legend. But if you will not, im lo tirzu, if you will not, it was only a legend. So you need to do something. It's not only a vision, of, uh, it's not only a dream, it's a vision. A vision creates uh, uh, guidelines, how to walk, how to do things in order to get to a new destination. Uh, Udi, thank this you is, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Udi, uh, again, as I, as I said, I'm sorry about my English. <laughs> uh, it's been a, uh, quite a while since I've been, uh, I did uh, uh, a tour in English. Uh, and yeah, if you want, now is a good time for questions. Udi, thank you very much. And thank you to everyone for being part of this uh, pioneering tool, which we've done uh, the first time in English. And there were a few questions. One was about uh, the funding of the uh, Technion. Second of all, about how Haifa is prepared if there's an attack from, uh, how is Haifa prepared from, from missile attacks? Maybe there's Okay, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll answer the second one because uh, it's, uh, um, it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> Haifa today, because of the uh, uh, Le Second Lebanon War, Haifa um, did uh, the city, the, the town hall, the municipality, uh, did a kind of a rearrangement uh, in the city. Uh, a lot of structures were uh, um, reinforced with steel and uh, uh, concrete, mainly Rambam. Rambam is the biggest uh, um, hospital in the north. Uh, so today you have a lot of departments there that are underground, so missiles can't uh, uh, hit it. 
there are a lot of problems yet. Uh, uh, for example, until recently, there was a ammonia uh, um, container uh, in Haifa, which was not uh, reinforced and, uh, and secure enough. So they moved it, uh, moved parts of it. It's not uh, exactly <laughs> that easy to move it. Uh, so uh, there are preparations in, uh, to another round of fighting, but uh, um, it's not, uh, uh, we, we're, secu we, we're feeling now secure. <laughs> as, as someone who lives in Haifa, I can tell you, I feel very secure. Um, the second question was about the funding of the the funding of the uh, of the, the technion. technion. Uh, the funding of the technion. The technion was built by a society from Germany, a company from Germany uh, called Ezra, uh, help for Jewish for German Jews. Uh, it was uh, they put the first uh, um, um, capital, I think. Uh, and uh, uh, afterwards, uh, the um, Zionist movement, uh, after the the, um, the war of uh, of the la of languages, uh, the Zionist movement became a more um, uh, how do you say uh, <laughs> uh, a more significant uh, partner. Yeah. So uh, uh, the Technion was first built by a non-Zionist society that wanted to uh, enrich German culture to Jews in Europe and in the entire Ottoman Empire uh, regions. Uh, but afterwards, the Zionist, uh, Zionist uh, uh, movement became a more important uh, part of it. Uh, and uh, in, when, when the State of Israel was founded, uh, it became the, the main uh, founder uh, and main, uh, um, how do you say? <laughs> the, the, the main part of it. <laughs> uh, Udi, thank you so much. We'd You're like welcome. to I'd also like to thank Udi for also walking, also practicing his English, also telling us about Haifa. <laughs> We'd like to thank on behalf of the Ben Gurion Heritage Institute, Dima and Steve from the Zionist Federation. Have a wonderful Zionist Congress in two days time. You can think about Herzl spraining his ankle at Jaffa port uh, in, uh, when, he, when he arrives here and some of the places in Haifa. So really thank you very much for joining us. Uh, over to you, Dima. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Esti and Udi, and thank you very much for our uh, guests and listeners. Uh, it's, it was really a fascinating journey about Haifa, me, myself, being a couple of times in Haifa, I, I still learning something new. It's, I would like to uh, make a couple of announcements. Uh, the first one, as you probably hear from Udi, we uh, will have 38 Zionist Congress, which this year will run by online. This means you have an opportunity to be part of it. Uh, just uh, follow the website, our Facebook page, and Zionist Federation Facebook page. Another event what we're going to have in the 3rd of November, it will be ZF annually Balfour lecture with Professor Eugene Kantorovich and uh, uh, Colonel Richard Kemp. And our next lecture about inspirational Zionists will be about, it's actually will be kind of event, lecture and music about Hannah Senesh, which will be on Sunday, 8th of November. Just please follow us in our Facebook page. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day. Stay safe and uh, see you in our next event. Bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye.